You hear it all the time. Goering persuaded Hitler that the Luftwaffe could successfully supply the 6th Army encircled at Stalingrad. Let's take a look at what the books say. Overy says, Hermann Goering, who accompanied Hitler, promised to supply pallets from the air with 500 tons a day. Shira says, Nevertheless, Goering assured Hitler that the Air Force could do the job. Manstein says, That Goering would commit the supreme frivolity of promising an adequate airlift and then not even lay himself out to produce at least what he had available was something no soldier could foresee. Wikipedia, the greatest source of false information going, says, When the 6th Army was surrounded by the end of November in Operation Uranus, Goering promised that the Luftwaffe would be able to deliver a minimum 300 tons of supplies to the trapped men every day. Wow, that's a really dumb decision. I mean, if you think about it, it doesn't even make any sense. Why would Goering commit to something that he knows he can't commit to? I mean, what's the motivation behind this? Clearly something else is going on here. And I think it's time that we tackle the myth. So as not to get the facts wrong, here's a direct quote from David Glantz. On 20th of November, General Hans Jezonek, Chief of Staff, of the Luftwaffe arrived at Burgess Garden to discuss the Air Force's role in future breakout or relief operations. Reichsmarshal Hermann Goering, the title ahead of the Luftwaffe, was chairing a petroleum conference at his country estate, Karanol. Foreseeing an encirclement, Hitler asked Jezunek whether the Luftwaffe could supply the 6th Army by air for the supposedly short time before Manstein could relieve the siege. Jezenek replied that such an airlift was possible, assuming that the Luftwaffe retained control of the forward airfields. Hermann Goering was nowhere near when the initial decision was made. In fact, it was General Hans Jezunek, a guy you've probably never heard of, who persuaded Hitler that the airlift was possible. It seems that Jezunek, aware of Richthofen's pessimistic attitude, but possibly misjudging the basic conditions, did at least not dispute the possibility of temporary aerial provisioning in principle. However, during a telephone conversation with General von Richthofen, the outspoken commander of 4th Air Fleet soon convinced the Chief of Staff that the airlift was impossible. Yet when Jezenik attempted to dissuade Hitler, the Führer brushed him aside. Predictably, Hitler based all his future decisions on Jezenik's ill-considered initial agreement that the airlift could be accomplished. When Goering arrived at Burgess Garden on the 22nd of November, he felt compelled to pledge that the Luftwaffe could accomplish this mission even though there had been no opportunity to calculate the tonnages involved. Yes, Goering agreed with Jezenek's initial decision two days after Jezenek made it, but he was not the person to persuade Hitler that the airlift was possible. And he only agrees with Jezenek because he doesn't want to go against his decision and also doesn't want to go against the Führer. Hitler, who had already accepted Jezenek's initial assessment, stubbornly refused to accept the possibility that the airlift couldn't succeed, and the rest is history. I do think it's hilarious, though, that several authors get it wrong and even make stuff up. But Goering assured Hitler that it could be done. Jezenek did not contradict him. That's the exact opposite of what actually happened! Even the beloved Beaver, in his highly popular Stalingrad book, and I'm not sure what he was actually smoking when he wrote this, said, Reichsmarshal Goering, on hearing what the Führer wanted, immediately summoned a meeting of his transport officers. He told them that 500 tons a day was needed. The 6th Army's estimate of 700 tons was ignored. They replied that 350 tons would be the maximum, and then only for a short period. Goering, with breathtaking irresponsibility, promptly assured Hitler that the Luftwaffe could maintain the 6th Army in its present position by air. Where did he get this information from? It sounds like he's mixing up two events. The initial decision made on the 20th by Jezenek, and the fact that Goering arrived on the 22nd and then probably spoke with Jezenek. I think the fact that Beaver writes on hearing what the Führer wanted probably suggests that Hitler had already made his decision. Which then you'd think, okay, but why did Hitler make this initial decision? And then digging a bit further, you realise that, oh, it's actually because Jezenek had already persuaded him. But by reading Beaver as it is, 
and other authors as well, you get the impression that Goering was the man who made the initial decision. But that's not the case. That is a myth. This is another example of how lies, myths and legends can work their way into the historical narrative. In the coming weeks, I hope to dispel several more Stalingrad myths and lies. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to be notified of when more videos come out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Bye for now.